This podcast is sponsored by Anchor, a free app that you can use to create your own podcast. It's the app that I've used to create my podcast, and it's great. Let me tell you a little bit about it. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit right from your phone or computer. You can add songs from Spotify directly into your episode. And the best part about it for me is that Anchor will distribute the podcast for you to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so many more platforms. Plus, you can make money off your podcast with advertising with no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. My noble colleagues... Less than an hour ago, an assassination attempt was made against my life. One of my bodyguards and six others were ruthlessly and senselessly murdered. I was the target, but more importantly, the security measure before you was the target. I have led the opposition to building this army. And someone will stop at nothing to assure its passage. Wake up, Senators! You must wake up! If you offer the Separatists violence, they can only show violence in return. Many will lose their lives, all will lose their freedom. I pray you do not let fear push you into disaster. Vote down this security measure, which is nothing less than a declaration of war. But this still is true for information across the world, and it's also true for information in the West, that in some cases, one classified video can possibly stop a war. And maybe 50 definitely can. The United States must pledge before the world that it will not pursue journalists for shining, shining a light on the secret crimes of the powerful. The US administration's war on whistleblowers must end. And to those wiser heads, in government, who are still fighting for justice, your day will come. First, I've got to ask you about this Yahoo reporting on Julian Assange. In addition to being the former Secretary of State, he used to run the CIA, as we discussed, and their report a couple of days ago, in which they claim to have spoken to more than 30 former U.S. officials, uh, and revealed that in 2017, the CIA, which you were running at the time, plotted to kidnap Julian Assange and even discussed plans to assassinate him. True or false? Thanks for pretty good fiction, Megan. They should write, they should write such a novel. Uh, look, I, I can't say much about this other than whoever those 30 people who allegedly spoke with one of these reporters, uh, they should all be prosecuted, 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 prosecuted. Welcome to A Conspiracy in the Force, the show where we examine parallel conspiracies in a galaxy far, far away, in a galaxy not so far away. The show is designed as an introduction to modern day conspiracy theories by using Star Wars, one of the most beloved fictional universes, as a point of reference. Let's begin. Hey, Conspiracy Kyle here. If you like this podcast, please rate, subscribe, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. It greatly helps out the show, and it's much appreciated. Also, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Conspiracy underscore Kyle, and that's Conspiracy with a K. Also, follow me on YouTube at Conspiracy Kyle, once again, with a K. And also, now you can find me on the Rockfin Network at rockfin.com with new exclusive content. Now on to the show. This episode is titled, Padme and Assange. At the end of The Phantom Menace, the illegal blockade and occupation of the peaceful planet of Naboo by the evil Trade Federation had been resolved. The leader of the Trade Federation, Newt Gunray, 
was arrested and was awaiting trial. Queen Padme Amidala had played a pivotal role in assisting her people by personally putting her own life on the line to fight off the foreign invaders. While the Trade Federation was, in essence, defeated, Padme still dealt with deep pain over the turmoil, death, and destruction her people endured during this crisis. These memories would haunt her over the next 10 years, and they would play a pivotal role in her next phase of her political career as a senator in the Galactic Republic. At the beginning of Attack of the Clones, the next film, we find out that the resolution to the Naboo crisis did not actually help to resolve tensions between the Trade Federation and the Republic. On the contrary, things were exacerbated to a breaking point now. Per Naboo Governor Seal Bibble, quote, After all the hearings and trials in the Supreme Court, Newt Gunray is still the Viceroy of the Trade Federation. End quote. So much for justice. We also come to find out that the Federation had joined forces with former Jedi Count Dooku in a separatist movement that now threatened to tear the Republic apart, as Dooku was able to rally many planets to the separatist cause. Now remember, Dooku is now the apprentice of Palpatine, aka Sidious, after the death of Darth Maul at the end of Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. With war on the horizon, the Republic needed the means to defend itself from attack. But how? The Republic did not have a formal army as such a military buildup had never been needed before. True, the Republic did have the powerful Jedi as their guardians of peace and justice, but they alone would not be enough to combat this impending threat. Thus, a piece of legislation was drafted in the Galactic Senate, appropriately titled the Military Creation Act. This act would create a grand army of the Republic. Of course, Chancellor Palpatine had secret insidious plans, <clears throat> pun definitely intended, to use this army in his final act of galactic conquest. Now this is where Padme made her grand stand in the Galactic Senate when she led a counter movement in direct opposition of this act. She had already seen the effect of war on her home planet during the Naboo crisis, so she did not believe further military action in the galaxy was in the best interest of the people. Also, she believed that many senators would find ways to selfishly exploit war efforts for financial and economic gain, which is a direct parallel to those in favor of the military-industrial complex in our world. The novelization of Attack of the Clones relays her inner monologue as follows, quote, It galled her to think that so many of her colleagues would be voting based on personal gain, everything from potential contracts to supply the army for their home systems, to direct payoffs from some of the commerce guilds, rather than for what was best for the Republic. End quote. With Amidala directly threatening the Act's passage, Palpatine had to find a way to remove her from the playing field. So, as any benevolent leader would do, he attempted to have her assassinated. Which brings me to the real-life counterpart to Padme, Julian Assange. Before I get into Assange, I'll be transparent. I'm not the foremost expert on Assange, the current status of his case, and even the specificity of him as a person. I'll do my best to lay out some summary details, but if you want further details on Assange and everything going on there, I would encourage you to go check out the Slow Newsday podcast with Steve Poikinen at slownewsdayshow.com. Steve and the team have been outspoken Assange activists for a long time and know more about this than I ever will. So, big shout out to Steve and the team over there for spreading the word about free speech and this conspiracy to silence Assange. So, as many of you already know, Julian Assange is the founder of WikiLeaks and has been notorious worldwide for leaking classified government documents to the public. In 2010, he came into prominence 
when he held a press conference with footage and documents of U.S. military operations in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, which was classified information. It's safe to say that the U.S. did not take kindly to the specific information he released. In 2013, he was granted asylum by Ecuador and holed himself up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. He was eventually turned over to UK authorities and has been jailed there in the UK ever since. In 2017, the US, under the Espionage Act, indicted Assange. And currently there are extradition hearings being held to bring him back to the US for a trial. Now, odds are that such a trial would not result in anything positive for Assange. News has come out recently about the U.S. government and their prior strategies regarding getting Assange back to America, and one means thrown out was a potential kidnapping. That way they could expedite a show trial for him and silence him by having him in the U.S. prison for life. But it doesn't stop there. Sources also suggest that the U.S. government was working through plans and strategies to silence him permanently rather than extradite. I think you know what I'm talking about here. An assassination plot. Former Secretary of State under Trump, Mike Pompeo, has come out recently recommending that whoever leaked this information about the Assange plots be prosecuted. So I think you can see the similarities between Padme and Assange pretty clearly. For one, they both saw the horrors of war either directly in Padme's case or through video footage in Assange's case. For two, they wanted to tell the public about these horrors of war in order to stop future violence and pointless wars that only benefited the military-industrial complex. For three, there were attempts made by perpetrators of this war violence to have them both assassinated and silenced. And finally, for four, the government did find a way to sideline both of these individuals and continue on their war efforts without them in the mix. In Padme's case, Chancellor Palpatine influenced Jar Jar Binks, who was acting in her stead as a senator, to grant Palpatine emergency powers to create an army, and he went ahead and started the Clone Wars conflict, which is what she was against. In the case of Assange, with him out of the public arena, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq have continued on for many more years, and some will argue that they will never end, and innocent lives are still being lost in the process. Both of these characters took a dramatic stand against the war machine and suffered consequences for it. My heart goes out to anyone who's willing to put themselves out there to fight for what is right and for what is true. I'll end with some quotes from Julian Assange. Quote, If journalism is good, it is controversial by its nature. End quote. End quote, Every time we witness an injustice and do not act, we train our character to be passive in its presence and thereby lose all ability to defend ourselves and those we love. End quote. May we all strive to live by that last quote and fight against evil whenever we see it and in whatever form it takes and whatever our consequences are. May the Force be with you.